In this problem, we're asked to determine substitutions u and v, where u is equal to some function f of xy, and v is some function g of xy, such that uv is equal to phi inverse of xy is a c1 change of coordinates. And then we're asked to produce explicitly phi to show that we have a smooth change of coordinates, and then evaluate are given iterated integral over our region R. So we're given, or rather the double integral over our region R, where the double integral is of the quantity y plus x squared times the quantity y minus x and times dA. And then R is defined as the region between where y plus x is between 0 and 2 and y minus x is between 0 and 4. So first, let's just sketch our region R just to get an idea of what it looks like. Okay, so we know that y plus x is greater than or equal to 0, but less than or equal to 2. So that means, let's look at the boundary. So when y plus x is equal to 0, we're along the uh, line y equals negative x. So right there. And then when y plus x is equal to 2, we have y is equal to 2 minus x. So when x is equal to 0, we're at some point 2. And then... We have slope negative 1. So we have these two parallel lines. So that's our first boundary condition. And then our second is that y minus x is between 0 and 4. So again, we'll look at the boundary. So we have y minus x equals 0 implies that y is equal to x. So we have So we have y equals x is just that, that line. And then we have y minus x equals 4 is y equals x plus 4. So when x is equal to 0, we're at, um, I guess I should have, we'll say that this is our point 4. Uh, and then we're at, again, a positive x. So we're looking at the region between these two lines. So greater than y equals x, less than y equals 4 minus x, or 4 plus x. And then we're looking at the region in between these two lines. So we're looking at this kind of tilted rectangular region. So this is our region R. Okay, so now we want to, the scaling's a little bit off, but you get an idea of what the picture will look like. Okay, so we want to find u and v such that we have a smooth change of coordinates. So looking at just our region, how our region is bounded, it looks like it would probably make sense to let y plus x be one of our variables are our change of coordinates and then y minus x to be another. So we'll let so we'll let u equal well I'll write it this way. So we'll let u be the first component, y plus x and v be our second component, y minus x. So now we want to, so we've picked our 
substitutions. So our function f of x, y is y plus x, and g of x, y is y minus x. Now this uv pair is phi inverse of x, y. So if we let, so we want to produce our function phi of, of uv. So if we let u equal y plus x, and v y minus x, we want to determine what x and y are in terms of u and v. So if we were to just add u and v, we would get u plus v equals 2y. Solve for y, we just divide by 2. We get u, y is equal to u plus v over 2. And similarly, we'll take u minus v, so we get 2x on the right hand side and u minus v on the left hand side. So I'm swapping the sides. And we'll divide that by 2. So we get u minus v over 2. So we see that we've explicitly produced our xy pair as phi of uv, where our x is transforming to u minus v over 2, and our y is going to u plus v over 2. So this is a smooth change of coordinates, um, since both these are infinitely differentiable. And now we want to, so we produced our phi to show that we have a smooth change of coordinates. Now we want to use this um, change of coordinates to evaluate our integral. So looking at our region R that we're integrating over, we see that we want our u, which is y plus x, to range from 0 to 2. So 0 to 2, or sorry, 0 to 2. So this is our u, I don't know why I wrote that upside down. So we have u equals 0 and u equals 2, so we want to range for all of those values. And then we have our v equals 0 is this line to v equals 4. So if we evaluate u from 0 to 2 and v from 0 to 4, we'll swipe through this entire region r. So we can set up our integral. So we'll integrate with respect to u first, and then with respect to v, or, wait. Yeah, u, integrate with respect to u first and then v. Um, and we want to now convert our y plus x and y minus x into terms of u and v. So y plus x we determined was u, or we let u equal y plus x. So this first term is just going to be u squared. And then our second term is y minus x, which we let v equal. So we have u squared v. And then we have dA. Now, we know that our element of area, dA, is equal to the absolute value of the determinant of our Jacobian matrix of phi. So recall that the Jacobian matrix is just the first row is 
all of our partial derivatives of our first component. The second row is all of the partial derivatives in the same order as the first of the second component. So we have essentially the gradient of our function that's in our first component and then the gradient um, of the function that's in our second component of phi. So if we take the partial derivative with respect to u first, we have u over 2 is the only term that has u. So the derivative of that with respect to u is just 1 half. So we have the determinant of 1 half is our first term. And then if we differentiate with respect to v, we have negative 1 half. So our first row is 1 half, negative 1 half. And then our partial derivative of our second component with respect to u is 1 half. And same with v, it's also 1 half. So we have. We have our element of area is equal to the absolute value of our determinant of matrix 1 half, negative 1 half, 1 half, 1 half. So the determinant of this matrix is 1 fourth minus a negative 1 fourth, which is 1 fourth plus 1 fourth, or 1 half, and absolute value of 1 half is 1 half. So we see that our dA is going to be 1 half du dV. So we can go ahead and plug that in. So I'll write the 1 half on the outside. And we have 1 half of our iterated integral of u squared v du dV. Okay. So now we can calculate our iterated integral. We'll evaluate our integral with respect to u first. So the integral of u squared du is u cubed over 3 times our v and 1 half. So we get So I combined our one-third and one-half into one-sixth. So we have the integral from 0 to 4 of u cubed v over 6, evaluated where u is evaluated from 0 to 2, and dv. So when u is equal to 2, u cubed is 8. So we have... Eight v over six minus when u is equal to zero, our function is equal to zero. So we just have our integral from zero to four of eight v over six dv. So this is really four thirds. So our integral of four thirds v dv is four thirds. Uh, times v squared over 2, which is four v squared over six, evaluated from zero to four. And again, we can simplify our fraction. to, Two thirds. So we have 2v squared over 3, evaluated from 0 to 4. When v is equal to 4, we have 2v squared is 16 times 2 is 32. 
over 3 minus when v is equal to 0, our function is equal to 0. So we have just 32 over 3 is our final result. So just to recap, we determined substitutions u and v such that we had a smooth change of coordinates, made it easier to evaluate our integral over our region since our region wasn't, um, wouldn't have been very easy to integrate in just Cartesian coordinates. It also simplified our function that we needed to integrate and we did so and then determined that the value of our iterated integral is 32 over 3.